Hello Internet, we are back on Battlespot using this team that I've dragged from the past. Um, the team that I used in the Glasgow Regional um, at the um, beginning of the year, in February. And um, basically swapped what was the Lapras for a Rotom because uh, I think it's just a bit better. I mean, not quite as bulky as Lapras. I mean, Lapras with an Assault Vest is very bulky, but I think Rotom maybe offers a little bit more support. Um, as we find um, Simone from Italia. Um, with a level 29 Charmeleon. Okay, well this guy's rating was, you know, alright. It was over 1,500. Um, I think we can assume that Charmeleon isn't going to come. Um, like, it can't... Like, there's no reason for it to have... It's got an item. <laughs> I don't know. What can Charmeleon do? Like, Endeavor? I don't know if it learns Endeavor. I don't think it does. Um, so let's just focus on the rest of the uh, the party, really. Um, so we've got, you know, Kangaskhan, Talonflame, the standard big six things, really, but with a Lati Ass instead, which is interesting. So, um, hmm. So I think I think what we'll do is actually in this game we'll go with him on top and ho -Oh. And in the back we want Rayquaza and I think Rotom, maybe, in this one. Although Amoongus? No. No, not Amoongus. Looking down three fire types and a psychic type. Um, like Latios was my other consideration, but I think Rotom's actually quite nice here. So, uh, you know, let's see if we can get Rotom doing some work. Um, you know, the, the worst thing about Rotom, as we saw in uh, Mondays, is really the accuracy of Hydro Pump. Um, you know, 80 is not reliable. Okay, and he just goes straight out with his boom, with his, his restricted Pokemon. Okay. So, we're going to intimidate the Groudon, which is quite nice. He's setting the sun up as well, so my Sacred Fires will do a lot of damage to his Xerneas here. Um, hmm. If you just go straight for the Moonblast on my... Hit my top as I Sacred Fire him, then... How can I protect my, my uh, Ho-Oh from his Groudon in the future? Uh, with my Rayquaza, can't I? Okay, so... Alright. Let's just make the really simple move then. Let's go for a fake out onto the Groudon and Sacred Fire onto the Xerneas. I have got a substitute here. The only other like consideration that I'm sort of thinking about is going for a substitute, which would be quite nice. Um, maybe, I, maybe I should go for a substitute because, you know, he might double protect on the first turn. Um, but no, I'm just going to go straight for the Sacred Fire because I don't want him to... Should've gone... I really should have gone for the substitute. Uh, just because I don't want him to um, set up the Geomancy straight away. And, um, you know, he wouldn't really threaten the Groudon, would he? But it wouldn't be pleasant for us. Uh, that is quite annoying because we have got leftovers. We would have started the, the recovery process um, with a substitute in place. So, you know, frustrating. But we're just going to go for a wide guard and a Sacred Fire. Nothing is going to want to take a Sacred Fire here. Um, his Groudon um, is probably the only thing on his team that really would like to take a Sacred Fire, and it's sitting right there. Fire Punch shouldn't knock out my Hitmontop, unless he gets a critical hit. He does actually just target the Hitmontop down. Okay. No, he doesn't. He Moonblasts my Ho-Oh. Alright, well, this guy had won some games, so I'm not quite sure what he's doing. That does a nice chunk of damage. Um... Hmm, okay. I think for the sake of safety, uh, I'm going to go for another wide guard, and I am actually just going to go for a substitute this turn. Um, because his Groudon was faster than his Xerneas, and if his Groudon knocks out my... Okay, if his Groudon knocks out my... him on top, then... No, he's not protecting his Xerneas this turn. Is he going to go for a Geomancy this turn? No, he's just going to Moonblast into probably the Hitmontop on top this time, yeah. So I am getting a free substitute this time, which is nice. Um, but, um, it would have been nice to have a turn one, but, you know, the game is early, the game is young. Ho-Oh is slower than both of his Pokemon, though, so that is maybe a little bit of a, an issue. Um, I've got Rayquaza here, which I think I'm going to put out. Um, with a Delta Stream, if he has got a rock move, which he hasn't used yet, um, which I think he might do if, like, considering he's staring down the ho over here, um, he might go for. But I'm, ju I'm just going to Mega Revolve, and um, 
we saw that his Groudon was faster than the Xerneas. So we know that my Rayquaza is definitely faster than his Xerneas here too. Um, so I could go for a Dragon Ascent on it straight away and just knock it out. But um, then I would be at minus defenses. And um, that wouldn't be too good for us. But I think we're going to be forced to do that to be honest. Because um, I don't think an Extreme Speed will knock his Xerneas out from there. And I don't want to... Oop, I don't want to do that again. Um, I don't want to... Um, Swords Dance here because although I have got a Focus Sash, uh, this Ho-Oh is slower than both of his Pokemon and you know I can't knock his Xerneas out before he would you know get two attacks onto my uh, Rayquaza. So can't Swords Dance here. Unfortunately, we are going to be at minus one defense. So we'll see if if he has got a Rock Attack because if he's got Rock Slide, then he will be going for it this turn, definitely. So the Xerneas is not you know not not being a problem for us at all in this game. Um, we just have to worry about the rest of his team. It is Fire Punch. Okay, well... Hopefully he doesn't burn us. No. We do, like... Because we lost... him on top um, fairly cheaply. Um, maybe his Kangaskhan in the back could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, so we had Kangaskhan and he was Talonflame as well, and there was a Latios, uh, Latias too. Um, so if he's got Latias, then maybe he'll bring it in here. Or otherwise it's probably just going to be the Kangaskhan. So you'd expect Talonflame in the back at this point. Mm, I've got Rotom in the back, so like, the Groudon is not an issue for us. It's just this Kangaskhan that really is the issue. Um, I'm going to protect the Rayquaza here and Sacred Fire the Kangaskhan. Uh, if he attacks my Ho-Oh here, then fair enough. I don't think he's got a rock attack because he didn't go for it, you know, last turn. Um, he just went for the Fire Punch. But if we get this Sacred Fire off, which we should do, then it will put it in Dragon Ascent range from the uh, Rayquaza. He isn't withdrawing his Groudon either, which he maybe should be because he's not considering my Rotom in the back. Okay, so we do see we do hit the Sacred Fire. That's quite nice. So this this isn't really the most competitive game, but I suppose um, ooh, we get the burn to. I suppose it is nice to see uh, a Ho -Oh actually doing some work. Um, you know, it's a bit of a rarity these days. It had a bit of a phase, didn't it, back in uh, January and February? But um, you know, not so much, not so much anymore. Uh, maybe because of uh, you know gravity actually. Um, you know, whenever, whenever I saw a ho -Oh, I was like, you know, right, I'm just going to gravity and, you know, <laughs> bulldoze all over you. Um, so, Kangaskhan isn't really too much of a threat now. Um, we are just going to... Um, like, Extreme Speed, I don't think I'll knock out either of, either of those. Um, so, I'm actually going to put in the Rotom. And oh, or am I? Yeah, I'll, I might as well do. And um, just brave bird the Kangaskhan. Just because um, if he has got Tunnel Flame in the back, then I think I should be able to survive a brave bird without the uh, speed drops. Um, although I suppose if he has got Tunnel Flame in the back, then um, maybe I should be playing a little bit more careful with with Rotom, but. Um, I've gone into a bit of a habit of just sort of waffling on a bit and not really paying attention to uh, the game, which isn't a good habit to get into, but um, alas, um, we do knock out the Kangaskhan, and you know, we are definitely going to have the Delta Stream up now, so as long as I do hit my Hydro Pump, then um, you know, the, the, the Groudon is going to be going down. And I'm quite surprised actually that he didn't bother switching his Groudon at any point in this game, um, especially because it doesn't have any rock attacks. And, you know, a Groudon that isn't in gravity, that doesn't have any rock attacks, is just walled by Ho-Oh. Um, you know, and Xerneas as well. That's why it was used back at the beginning of the year, so, uh, um, you know, so enthusiastically as it was for that moment in time. So really, he can't he can't touch my Rotom, to be honest. So I'm just going to Thunderbolt the Talonflame and... Um, and... It doesn't really matter what I do, does it? I mean, as long as I knock out the Talonflame... Um, we've won the game because a Dragon Ascent should knock out the Groudon from there. Should, unless it's a bit bulkier, but um, you know, hey ho, we knock out the Tunnel Flame. Uh, 
And um, yeah, this poor Groudon, she's just sort of been sitting there all useless for the for the whole battle. Hmm, I don't know. Like on the uh, the team with the Sylveon that I was using last week, um, that special Groudon had hidden power ice, so um, you know that that Groudon would have been walled by this Ho as well. But uh, some Groudon do have Thunderbolt these days, and actually I think yeah, Inosh, yeah, Inosh had Thunderbolt on his, didn't he? Um, and you know that could do you know a little bit of a, a chunk. It would probably break the substitute of the Ho so you know the Ho wouldn't wouldn't wall a, a Thunderbolt Groudon. But we, you know, we uh, get another win, thank thankfully, and uh, we'll look for another game, and hopefully we can finish this episode with a, uh, a more of a competitive game. So, um, yeah, it's quite nice. Like, there's lots of nice things on this team, I think. Like, like I think I said in, in Monday's episode, this team isn't really my style. Like, I don't normally use Intimidate. There's no pranks to Pokemon on here. There's no real shenanigans going on. It's just sort of a, a solid-ish team. Um, with, you know, some switching potential and, uh, you know, the potential to sort of grind out games. And uh, you don't really see Rotom Wash at all, um, this format, which is a little bit surprising because Rotom Wash has always been um, a very, very, very good Pokemon. And I still think it is a very good Pokemon. Um, I mean, what, like in past years from 14, you know, 14, 15, it's had Kangaskhan to worry about a bit more. Um, this one's got a Citrus Berry. They tend to have Citrus Berry so it can survive an attack and maybe will a wisp it back. Um, but, you know, what else is, is really threatening Rotom, you know, that, that wasn't before? You know, maybe there's stuff like Evoltol and um, Xerneas, but against both of the Primals, Rotom Wash is actually really good, you know, if you've got some sort of weather control, like, uh, you know, the, the uh, Rayquaza here. So, um, yeah, it's quite nice to see little Rotom bobbing up and down when it comes out. Latios is not a commonly used Pokemon either. Um, as we find, okay, we find someone from Canada that doesn't have a particularly high rating. Um, hopefully this one will be competitive, though, as we see. Okay, so he has got two restricted Pokemon. This does actually look like a pretty solid team. Um, yeah, this could be tricky. Um, yeah, because this team doesn't really appreciate Salamence too much. Um, Meowstic is always a pain. Uh, Evoltol is not something that I'm that used to using with this team as well, so I'm not... You know, I'm not feeling overly confident here by any means. I, I'm going to go with him on top and Latios, though. And, I don't know, I think Rotom is nice here. Yeah, Rotom is very nice. Like, Rotom is always very nice. Maybe not ho here. Maybe Rayquaza, but... But, I don't know. Um, ho would be alright. Like, I'm... Is him on top that necessary? I'm thinking maybe it is because he has got his own fake out. He has got potential trick room maybe with Meowstic. Um, and I've got quick guard too if he's going to try and thunder wave me and all the rest of it. Um, Latios is nice because um, it is scarfed and it will um, knock out the Salamence, which is a big issue. It can knock out the uh, Infernape as well. It can trick potentially the Meowstic and sort of screw that up. Um, so we will go with the Rayquaza here. Um, ho -Oh would be nice though because I think I can, you know, I should take a knockoff from um, an Evoltol and it would be nice to burn it back. So I'm a little bit worried about the Evoltol here, but we'll see how it plays out. Um, you know, you really cannot take games on Battle Spot for granted. It does not matter what their rating is. Um, so, fingers crossed, we'll be alright here. He does go with his, you know, I kind of saw the coming, his sort of control lead. He's got a fake out. He's got uh, potential Thunder Waves, potential um, Trick Room. So, this is a bit tricky. You know, he's potential. well, he's got two potential Quick Guards here as well. Um, did it, his, his team didn't really look very Trick Roomy, so I don't think he is going to go for a Trick Room. I don't want a quick guard here in case he fake out, you know, uses fake out on my Latios. Um, so I'm just going to go for a fake out on his Meowstic. And. Um, and. I'm just going to fire off a Dragon Pulse into his Infernape. If he, did, if he does use fake out on my Latios, which he doesn't, um, then I could, um, you know, oh, it is Thunder Wave. Then I could pick another move next turn and maybe trick his Meowstic, which would be nice. 
Um, so Latios does get the Dragon Pulse off. I'm, I went for the Dragon Pulse and not the Psychic, just because I am expecting a Focus Ash on this Infernape. Um, you know, the guy's rating one that high, but I'm pretty sure there is a, a Focus Ash on there. Uh, we didn't see a Life Orb, I don't think, from his from his fake out there. Um, so, this is a little bit of a pain, really. Is he just going to go for a, another... Another... Thunder Wave on my him on top? He might do. So I'm going to bring in the Rotom. Um, he's intimidated, so if he does close combat that slot, it shouldn't do much damage. And I'm just going to go for a Dragon Pulse onto the Infernape as well. Uh, I'm not sure if I, fin if I uh, finished off my sentence uh, earlier when I was saying why I use Dragon Pulse. Because it hits uh, Meowstic Neutral as well, and Psychic wouldn't do too much there. He gets a Reflect, um, which... Ooh, a Thunder Punch, okay. Which um, could make things a little bit tricky for us. Hmm. So, okay, we'll see how this goes. I'm expecting his Eveltal to come in now. Or maybe, maybe not his Salamence. Yeah, this is Eveltal. Um, hmm. So we've seen Thunder Wave. We have seen Reflect. Don't know if he will have Safeguard. But I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp on the Eveltal. And bring in the Hitmontop back for an Intimidate onto the Eveltal. So he can't knock my Rotom out with... Um, a knockoff. Shiny Eveltal as well. Um, obviously, uh, you know, done his event business, event Pokemon business there. Oh, he has got Safeguard. Oh, no. Um, and he does go for a knockoff. Uh, but it's on the Hitmontop. Okay. Um, and it is Life Orb as well. Oh, dear me. Um, this is not good. This is not good at all. Um, like, we're a Pokemon up, but, you know, what does that really mean? I suppose I'll Thunderbolt the Evoltal here. Um, and I'm going to put Latios back in. He might be tempted to Thunder Wave the, um, the Hitmon top, just because I'm thinking Meow Sticks. Um, you know, it doesn't really have too many other moves to do. I should survive this. Uh, but unfortunately, we do lose a Citrus Berry, you know, thanks to, um, you know, Knockoff's ability. Um, we'll get a nice amount of damage with the Thunderbolt onto it. Um, we'll actually knock it out with a Thunderbolt, with a critical hit. Have I just been bailed out there? Um, I mean, we have still got four Pokemon. Um, and he's only got two now. Um, but, I don't know, I can't help but feel that in some way I might have needed that. I don't know. Like, my Rayquaza is still untouched in the back, and I did still have um, another Intimidate that I could cycle in as well, so, um, you know, maybe I'm giving a little bit too much credit here, but I don't know, I mean, the game still isn't over at all, because he has still got a Meow Stick, and um, that is annoying, <laughs> always annoying. Rotom, it hasn't got Protect, and I don't want to just sort of bring in one of these Pokemon, um, on a potential water spout, so I'm just going to go for a Thunderbolt into the Kyogre, and um, Latios, I'm actually, like, if Latios survives this turn, I'm actually going to go for a trick onto the Meowstic, just so that I know it is stuck into potentially a useless move, but it's stuck into, um, oh, we're faster, okay, obviously quite a slow Kyogre then, um, we'll know that it will be stuck into something. Um, so if I do, you know, bring in him on top, then I can just quick guard every turn, and I can basically shut that slot down. Um, so if we don't get paralyzed, we will get the trick off here. Yeah, so we do get the trick. Um, which is nice. Um, he did use knockoff on my hit on top, though, didn't he? So, um, I have lost my Lumberry that was on the hit on top. Um... Do I want to bring in the Hitmontop or do I want to bring in the Rayquaza? Hmm. Okay. If I bring in the Rayquaza, um, then he can just Thunder Wave me. 
and I don't really want that. So, and I don't really trust him to knock out my Latio. So that's what I was thinking. If I put in the um, Rayquaza, then I could protect and maybe try and get an attack off with the Latios. But um, I would really want the Latios to go down that next that turn so, to get the free switch into my Hitmontop, and I didn't really trust him to uh, Ice Beam into the Latios there. So. I'm bringing the Hitmontop out, and I've got a safe fa uh, fake out. I can go for a fake out on either of his Pokemon. Um, but I feel like I've got to go for the fake out on his Kyogre, to be honest. And um, and he will be paralyzing my Hitmontop, which is annoying. And I'll just try and... I suppose I'll try and Psychic the Kyogre, because that could potentially put it into extreme speed range. So, we'll see if we don't get paralyzed here. So, okay. And he can't quick guard. And that actually does a, quite a fair bit of damage as well. Uh, there's a few a few instances where um, I would really like faint on this on top, but I don't have it, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to go for a wide guard here. And, I mean, he'll probably, he's probably going to go for an ice beam, really, isn't he? But ni neither of my Pokemon can protect. And I don't want to switch in my Rayquaza. So... Um, so I think I will just go for a wide guard, I guess, and um, and a why not a dragon pulse just for a different animation. If we get the attack off, he doesn't protect his Kyogre again, though. Maybe he's going going to go for an ice beam on my um, Latios. Yeah, but well, should knock it out. Yeah, but. Um, next turn, I can bring in my Rayquaza. I have got a Focus Sash, so um, even if he does get an Ice Beam and it critical hits me, then I should survive. Um, but um, you know, and that is like I'm I'm thinking too far into the future. Um, that is because I'm thinking like I'm going to go for an extreme speed onto his Kyogre here. Uh, I'm going to try and Quick Guard as well. Um, but if I get fully paralyzed on my Quick Guard and he protects his Kyogre and does get the Thunder Wave onto my Rayquaza, and then I get fully paralyzed when I'm trying to extreme speed the next turn, it's a lot of ifs. So I think I think we are pretty safe to be honest. Um, but you know, it is a lot of ifs. But this is Pokemon. You know, anything really anything if it's coded into the game if it's in the rng anything can happen <laughs> um but yeah we should be safe here okay so we do get the quick guard so he's not going to paralyze me this turn and you know he doesn't actually try and protect either so the game's over um that trick was quite nice on his um Meow stick. It meant that he couldn't go for like a reflect, or uh, we didn't see his last move. I don't think. You know, maybe it could have been Swagger, as he did have safeguard. We really wouldn't have wanted to deal with Swagger. So um, let's uh, just. Um, I mean, they'll probably forfeit here or not. Well, let's just you know probably take two hits to knock the Meow stick out. Meow stick is actually pretty bulky, but uh, you know our opponent obviously doesn't want to forfeit. Wants to let his Meowstic go down with honor. And that should be an extreme speed range now, so it doesn't matter if we get fully paralyzed now on the quick guard. So, uh, there we go. So, another, um, well, I suppose uh, you could say a successful um, um, showing from this team, I guess. Um, we, we did win two games. Maybe. Um, you know, not the most of competitive games, so, you know, apologies for that. I mean, we are actually decently up the ladder. We're, like, at 1,700 on the ladder, so, you know, our opponents should know what they're doing. And, you know, this guy, he kind of didn't know what he was doing, but, um, you know, it didn't turn out as, as pretty as, as some other games can do. But I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. You know, please feel free to like and share the video. You know, share it to your friends, get it out there. Um, you know, because, again, I do appreciate all of that. I really do. So, uh, thanks a lot, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this. And goodbye for now. As uh, we'll just let this go through. And there we go. Bang. Win. Thank you. Goodbye for now.